We're tracking Fox shares today after Rupert Murdoch has announced that they will, Rupert will be stepping down as chairman from Fox and News Corp this morning. That announcement was made in a memo, and his son, Lachlan Murdoch, will become chairman of both companies. Joining us now, we've got Vanity Fair correspondent and hoax author, Brian Stelter. Brian, uh, good to have you here with us on this. Just want to get your reaction to this. Uh, finally, some semblance of a succession plan uh, that's come forward, perhaps, but now we're continuing to watch shares here in reaction to exactly what this means for News Corp and Fox. Right, Rupert Murdoch always famously said that he would never retire. In fact, his son Lachlan Murdoch said the same thing almost a decade ago. He said, my dad is never retiring. But today is the closest thing we will ever see to Rupert Murdoch retiring. He is handing over all the power uh, for the first time and the only time in his career. And this does confirm the succession plan that had appeared to be in the works for many years. Lachlan Murdoch had clearly been the favored son, the chosen son, uh, ever since uh, the, the you know, 2015, 2016, 2017. 17. Son James Murdoch has completely left the companies. He hates what Fox News has become. So now Lachlan Murdoch will be the sole chair of both Fox and News Corporation. And of course, we should face the facts. This is happening as both companies are in a shrinking period. They are in a shrinking phase. They are trying to grow, but like many other media companies, they are facing headwinds involving streaming, involving digital subscriptions, involving the death of newspapers. So I, I suppose, to be frank, uh, these jobs are not as fun as they were when Rupert Murdoch was the swashbuckling media mogul uh, of decades past. The job has shrunk in some ways for his son, Lachlan, and now Lachlan moves forward on his own. Brian, what do you think this is going to have, or if any, impact on the strategy at Fox and News Corp, the direction of those two companies? How do you see that changing, if at all, with this? I think the number one question would be about editorial vision, and I think Lachlan and Rupert are very much in alignment on that. Lachlan Murdoch is as conservative, or in some cases more conservative, than his father. So I would not expect dramatic changes editorially. Uh, on the business strategy, uh, we have seen Lachlan Murdoch trying to ex expand and streaming with Tubi, for example, at Fox Corporation, and with News Corp, a pressuring a, a Facebook and Google to pay up for digital content. I would expect those moves to continue. Uh, I think the, the longer term question is what happens to these companies in the event that Rupert actually passes away and is no longer uh, in charge of the Murdoch Trust. You know, even though he is stepping aside today, he still has four votes out of eight in the Murdoch Trust. That ultimately controls both companies. In the event of his death, uh, each of the four adult children have one vote each. Lachlan would only have one vote, as far as we know, unless something's changed today, and we have no reason to believe that it has on that front. So I would expect, you know, potential uh, uh, reorgs, uh, reshuffling, changing of assets, only in the event Rupert passes away, not at this moment in time. Would this reinitiate any talks around the merger between Fox and News Corp? Yeah, I was, I've been wondering that in the past few minutes as well, and I haven't heard uh, clear guidance from sources on that yet. Uh, my initial reaction is that shareholders were, large shareholders were significantly opposed to the re-merger of News Corp and Fox uh, earlier this year, late last year, earlier this year. T. Rowe Price, for example, large shareholder in News Corp, said this is a, a, a bad idea. James Murdoch also weighed in and said this is a bad idea. So Rupert uncharacteristically backtracked, walked away, gave up on the proposal. Uh, there is certainly going to be conversation about whether that's going to be rekindled. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't see it happening imminently, though. Brian, when you take into account the fact that he does have this emeritus status, I mean, from your time, from your colleagues, who you've spoken with in the past, how involved do you think he's still going to be in some of these decisions? Yeah, it's a complex picture that we saw through the Dominion v. Fox lawsuit, because uh, through that lawsuit, we, received, we, we were all able to see thousands of pages of emails and text messages, including from Rupert Murdoch. And there are some times when he seems like an active, involved uh, owner, someone who's really interested in the content, reading all of his newspapers, uh, watching Fox. There are other times in those emails where he seemed incredibly passive, where he was not all that engaged, where he was not steering the ship, it was more like he was just uh, in the back of the ship taking in the view, enjoying the view. Uh, I would say that that is, at 92, that is the Rupert Murdoch that comes through most days now. Someone who is not in the front, not the captain of the ship anymore. And, you know, perhaps this announcement this morning just confirms what has been true for a little while, that he is no longer uh, the, the man who uh, put fear into the hearts of so many executives for decades. I'm working on a book called Network of Lies about Fox and, and Murdoch and, and, and Trump. And, and one of my sources for the book said to me, there was a time decades ago, there was a time when uh, Rupert would say jump 
and all over everybody around him would say how high right we know all we know that expression you know uh, the, the boss says to do something people will do it no matter what but the point my source was making was that time has come and gone that time has passed he no longer commands that power uh, now, whether his son Lachlan can command that power, whether his son Lachlan will be feared and revered and reviled in the same way, I suppose that's the start of the chapter we're talking about today. Certainly a new chapter there for News Corp and for Fox. Brian Stelzer, always great to get your perspective on this. Vanity Fair correspondent and author of Hoax. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.